Am I motivated to do this video? Fuck no. Motivation is overrated. All the Japanese fluent people like Dogen, I hate you, Dogen. Let me talk about my new strategy to learn Japanese. What's up, Yakuza? It's your favorite drama queen. And today I'm back with a new video where we're going to be talking about learning Japanese. Throughout the video, I'm going to be talking about six things. Number one, why I haven't learned Japanese so far after five years of living in Japan. Number two, why I think I want to learn Japanese now. Number three, mistakes that I've made while trying to learn Japanese during my life in Japan. Number four, my new strategy of learning Japanese now. And number five, the advantages I think that I have for learning Japanese. So it was actually five things and not six. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you're new to this channel, hey, hello, my name is Ila and I go by Crazy La. I live in Japan and every Sunday I upload a video about my life in Japan. I do vlogs, I do interviews, I do chat with you guys and it's been a while, Yakuza. I'm sorry, it's been a while since we've had a one-on-one -on -one chat like this. And sometimes I react to things that are not related directly to Japan but are trendy and sometimes personal things. So you see a bit of everything on this channel but mostly at least 80% related to life in Japan. So if you you like this type of content you like japan you like my pretty little face you like the vibes around here don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my social media don't hesitate to say hi by the way but hey if you've been around here already you know the vibes you know how we roll thank you for tuning back in now let's get started with this video So the first part of this video is going to be a little bit of a justification ish and why I haven't learned Japanese so far. So I came to Japan in 2017 and I came under a scholarship by JICA, Japanese International Cooperation Agency, and I came under an English speaking program. Keep in mind, I had no clue about Japan. I had no clue about life in Japan because back in my home country, Congo, we don't really look at Japan much. When we think of traveling, when we think of living abroad, we look more at America and the Europe. We don't really think about Eastern Asia much. This just to say that I had no clue in Japan you really need Japanese to survive and mostly for your career which I'm going to be talking about later in this video. So coming to Japan for my master's and following the whole program in English didn't really help me to fit in the society at least to learn the language. So what I did is one winter I registered for language learning and I was taking classes about three times a week. That class was awful. The whole setup just didn't allow me to learn much. It was in winter I had to travel the whole okay not country the whole it was a long ride okay with my bicycle during winter I had to wake up at 7 a.m. and then go to a class where I don't understand 80% of the things the teacher was speaking all in Japanese I don't know if it's strategic way of making people learn and unfortunately he was following the pace of the person who was much more advanced in Japanese language I have to admit there was a lady in particular that was pissing me off she did the same level at least three times she was much more advanced and the teacher was always going with her pace and all of us were staying behind I'm not trying to say it's everybody else's fault and not mine but I'm just trying to assess the system and how it didn't help me to learn more and to be motivated about learning Japanese but still I kept on going with that class and I didn't want to go over one month of it when I got the certificate of like learning basic Japanese I just stopped going to these classes I actually thought I knew enough to take kanji class so I started kanji class in another department like different completely different sensei unfortunately I failed at kanji my score was reflected in my school scores and I hated that because it will influence my GPA. If you know things about academics and people who like, I don't know, <laughs> A little bit obsessed with the GPA and the scores at class, it's really annoying when your GPA goes down because of something that is not exactly useful for you, like Japanese. At least at that time, I thought it wouldn't be that useful for me. I dropped it out. I was like, fuck it. Failing at kanji was my first step to actually refuse or reject the overall Japanese learning system. And I have to say, I couldn't practice a lot with my Japanese friend because they also came into an English master's program. That means they wanted to practice their own English and not really converse in Japanese. So that didn't help me either. So in two years of masters I really stayed basically in a student life bubble surrounding with people that mostly speak English and I have to say that I didn't speak English before coming to Japan I mostly accumulated knowledge of English through films through music lyrics of songs when you know you are interested in a song and you want to know what it says I was literally printing the lyrics and go with a booklet of lyrics like this to school <laughs> when I was in high school in Congo this to say that it's only in Japan where I was surrounded by English speakers that I was kind of forced to start 
stop speaking the language. I remember that it was hard for me and so frustrating when I'm trying to say something to my friends and express my feeling. And that's how I picked cursing. <laughs> I curse a lot in English. I think it's because I don't know sometimes the right vocabulary. So I tend to take a shortcut, you know, just say, okay, fuck it. Yeah, because it feels better, period. And that's how you can hear me speaking like this in only like two years of practice. Not really two years because I accumulated the language as I said before, but you know, I'm talking about speaking the language, you get me? Okay, back. So it wasn't the case for Japanese, unfortunately, because my environment was in Japanese speaking. I felt comfortable speaking English anyway, much more comfortable than trying to speak Japanese because starting from the alphabet, it was hell. The teaching system wasn't working for me. Keeping up with justification, the other reason I couldn't learn Japanese is because I didn't have enough time. I was following two different masters. I always say two different masters, but it's actually a master's and another certificate program in parallel. I didn't have time for shit. I just had time for my school. <laughs> I was like, I need to make this better. I need to have my diplomas. I need to have my degrees and I need to have to keep my GPA high. I really didn't care about language anymore. I was just like, I ain't got no time for this because I'm failing anyway. And the last justification is learning Japanese is actually expensive. When you're outside an academic setting and you try to have, for example, a private English teacher, it's actually expensive. I tried to do that with some of my Japanese friends who actually teach Japanese online. And when I looked at the receipt at the end, I was like, I ain't got no money for this, okay? The way my bank account is set up, I said I would, but the way my bank account is set up, the thing is, I got a check-in in the savings, but all the money is in my savings, so I gotta switch it to my check-in, but it's gonna take three business days. I don't, I don't think it's gonna go through. I don't think it's gonna go through. <laughs> Let's just say the way my salary is set up right now, most of my income is going back to school because I went back to school, but it's another story for another video. The rest is going for my rent, for the small bills, my hair, and my self-care. So I don't really have that much money to dedicate to Japanese learning. And hell yeah, language school is so expensive. That's why people have visa only for it, okay? When I get inscription in the language school, that language school can support their visa application because they're paying so much money for the school. So don't even get me started with language school. I can't afford it. If you can do it, good for you. This brings us to, okay, Ila, why do you actually want to learn Japanese then? Number one reason is my career. I noticed after graduation that the type of job that I'm getting because my Japanese language is so low, it's not exactly reflecting my credentials. Okay, Akuzas, I don't want to make you feel like I'm too proud or something, but you know, when you're coming from a family that is not exactly the richest family in the world and they have invested so much money and time and effort in your education for you to have a better job with nice income so that you can survive by yourself it's so heartbreaking to see all that time and effort and money just being dragged down or being reduced to a language that you didn't even thought you needed in your life and yo school in Congo is not for free from primary school to university and it is expensive so not everybody can actually afford it I was lucky enough to be educated so I want that to be reflected in my career as well as my credentials and all the working experience that I have accumulated in other places than Japan but it's not working because of the language so that frustration and also me trying to be fair with all the effort that my parents has put in my education is pushing me now to learn the language. The other reason is pride. I've been in Japan for five years. If I ever leave, the first place I'll go, people will be asking me, okay, how do you say this in Japanese? And I will be looking like an idiot. So I'm learning Japanese. Hell yeah. The other reason is for communication. Basically, all the jobs that I've got in Japan after my graduation didn't really know, allow me to practice my Japanese because I was surrounded by English speakers anyway. All the companies were international and stuff like that. So I didn't really feel like I need to practice Japanese. But right now, in my current working space, every other thing is conducted in Japanese. Of course, it's a completely international company. There are many people from all over the place, but all the meetings where I have to put an important input are conducted in Japanese. And also, I think if I don't really show off what I can do, just because I don't speak the language, I don't see myself, you know, doing better in the company or having more responsibility or even having my salary getting better. So yeah, I want to learn Japanese. Other reason is for challenge. I like challenging myself, especially when it comes to new skills, except programming. I'm trying though. The last reason, which is mostly common among foreigners in Japan, I've noticed is I'm not leaving anyway. There are so many reasons in the world to push me to get the fuck out, but I'm still here. So let me just learn anyway. Now, number three, what are the mistakes that I have made so far in my Japanese learning journey? Yeah, this is the exact moment where I start blaming everybody else but myself. Mistake number one, exactly related to what I just said before, is thinking I'm leaving. So the mindset of a foreigner or the mindset of people living abroad is always that I'm on the go, I'm on the leave, I'm not staying here for long. And this is a first mistake to not make you feel like you need to learn the language because you're gonna go anyway. That was my mistake. And look at me, five years later, I'm still here. Mistake number two is giving up too soon. I was always thinking people who speak Japanese are special. All the Japanese fluent people like Dogen, I hate you, Dogen. I was always 
thinking all these people are particularly skilled or they have a special skill to be speaking Japanese the way they do. So setting my mindset in a way that I'm not good at this, using the sentence I'm not good at this and then giving up so easily when I start learning Japanese because I think it's too difficult and people who can do it are special was another mistake. Another mistake is being overwhelmed by resources. There are so many resources for learning Japanese, audiobooks, YouTube channels, actual books, people, private teachers, applications and when I was looking at all of them and couldn't know which one to choose I was so overwhelmed that I was rejecting the whole thing at the same time I was like I don't know what's the best book for me I don't know what's the best YouTube channel for me I tried with learning Japanese 101 and I did that for about one week but it just didn't work out but that's not because it's a bad channel it's because the way that things are set up I will explain later anyway so not knowing exactly that I need to focus on only one resources and not get overwhelmed but the abundance of things that are out there about learning Japanese or just giving up was a mistake enough about negativity and justification now let me talk about my new strategy to learn Japanese. My new strategy of learning Japanese is based on three tools. First tool is this book right here. It's called Genki. As I told you before, there are so many resources out there and you just gotta focus on one. Just pick one. Just pick one. Pick one. Whatever. You're wondering if I would recommend you to buy Genki One for learning basic Japanese and I'll say yes because number one, it is rated as the best book out there if you check it and number two, because I'm using it. Period. I decided to pick this one because my boyfriend who is fluent in Japanese and I hate him for that. He used this as his basic for learning Japanese and he learned Japanese in like two years. Hate him. I really think recommendations like this work. Why? Because I chose this book because someone close to me who is a testimony of learning language through that book recommended it to me. He did put a name on my goal of learning Japanese. It was just easier for me to pick one book. So yeah, Genki is in my new strategy of learning language. But not only Genki because the fun part is I had this book in digital form for months. I just couldn't print it because it was expensive to print it in the combini. When I go to the university, I always forget to print it. When I go in the combini to buy something else and print the book, I never do it. When I go to the combini only to print that book, I realize, no, fuck, it's so expensive. I'm not printing it in color. The font is not the right font. It's gonna look too big anyway. I had all the justification that make it so difficult for me to just possess the book. And this will bring me to my tool number two, which is an amazing book called Atomic Habit. I completely recommend this book to whoever is out there because you can apply it in all your area of life and it works. I cannot go through the whole book because it's like a very long book, but maybe I'll put a summary of a YouTube video that talks about it in the description box of this video. So according to the book, motivation is overrated. If you want to make something a habit, if you want to include something into your routine, it's not up to your motivation. It's up to your system. It's up to your environment, the way that things are set up. In summary, what Atomic Habit tells you as advice to build a habit in your life is number one, make it obvious. Number two, Two, make it easy number three make it satisfying number four make it attractive so it just helps you to set your system to set your environment in a way that what you want to build as a habit is just easily accessed to you is not conflicted with your current habit and it's just satisfying to do i know it's not very simple and just saying like this doesn't work but i really advise you to read this book and try to apply it for any other thing in your life i could never imagine but when i started applying these theories in my life it actually worked let me give you an example drinking water there are so many illnesses that i got into my life because I just didn't drink enough water. Even if I reminded myself to drink, even if I downloaded an application that say, hey, drink water every five minutes, I wouldn't just drink. Then someday I bought this jar this baby right here of water and I thought this will help me to drink more water it didn't because I placed it in the wrong location first location was next to my TV but it was so related to my chilling vibe that I just didn't have enough willpower to stand up and take a glass of water and then I placed it next to my bedroom in my bed head I don't know how you guys call it in English then again that didn't work out because next to my bed head was my phone and where I charge and the plug you know when water meets electricity it really doesn't work out okay so every time I was trying to drink water while I'm on my bed I was afraid that there will be some water pouring into the plug and on my phone. Then I tested again to put this jar of water right on my dining table and in a position where I see it all of the time. And this worked out every time I'm coming from the gym, every time I'm coming from outside, even if I'm sitting right here, I can just grab a glass of water by instinct and drink it. And it doesn't feel like work at all. It doesn't feel like a goal in my day. It just became a part of my routine. I did the exact same thing for my gym. <laughs> People always think that going for workout, you have to be motivated by certain things, you know. I don't think I had any body goal when I started working out. I just wanted to look healthy. It was hard for me to start at first. Then today, my gym became just a part of my routine 
routine and how I made it easy for me to go. I put my workout outfit on my table or on my chair the night before my working out. So the moment I wake up, I directly see my workout outfit and I just wear it and go down. I'm not motivated to do that at all. The other example that will make you laugh is my YouTube channel. Am I motivated to do this video? Fuck no. Am I motivated to be uploading a video every Sunday on my channel? Fuck no. <laughs> but the thing is, I set up a schedule. Every Sunday, I gotta have a video. The fact that I did put a time on my schedule just did help me to set up every other thing that makes me publish a video every Sunday. The last example that I have is about my editing. I'm running two YouTube channels. If you're a content creator out there, you know how horrible, annoying, time consuming, so consuming editing is. In fact, many people give up on the YouTube channel just because they don't have time to edit. Do you think I have time? Hell no. <laughs> And I'm sure none of us out there has time. What do I do with my editing? I make it easy. During commuting time in Japan, if you don't have a seat, you're standing, the only thing people do is being on their phone. My phone subscription is so low, I only have five gigabyte per month that I can't really use social media when I'm outside. I made access to social media so hard that I can have that time to edit my video. So right now that I have the physical book and it did take me a lot of willpower to actually purchase it, <laughs> I had to be told that I'll be refunded. <laughs> So what I'll do right now as a system setup, I'll try to put the Genki book next to my bedroom. I'm sure it's going to be conflicting between checking the social media before sleeping and reading a book. And that will be a test. And if it doesn't work out, I'll put it in the living room table just next to the TV. But I'm thinking maybe there will be a friction with the other activity that I associate with my living room. For example, playing Nintendo Switch or watching Netflix. I'm very sure I should never put it on my working table because the way it's set up, it always isolates me from activity in the living room and I tend to look and try to see what is going on on the TV or something like that and even when the tv is turned off i will stand up and go to turn it on can you imagine the willpower it takes me to just go turn on the tv for absolutely no reason i will also have a trial with my commuting time because when i don't have a sitting place while commuting i can't really edit so maybe when i'm commuting not sitting i will have to open the book so i have to bring that book in my backpack if you see me during weekdays somewhere around tokyo carrying a huge bag with so many things inside it don't blame me i'm carrying my habits i'm trying to set a routine i am trying to see where i'm going to place it in my system in my environment so that i can make it a habit to open the book my last tool for learning japanese will be bumble friends it's a bit cringy to try to find friends uh, through an application but there's absolutely no shame in trying to make new friends especially when you have the tools for it we are in 2022 like just adapt with the tools that you have so i'm trying to use bumble friends not because i don't have friends per se but because my current friends or everybody surrounding me is only speaking english with me whether they're non-japanese half japanese or japanese we're so used to already communicating in english and french that it's going to be really hard to switch to japanese so easily the last point of this video is what advantage i actually think i have to be learning japanese now easier than before and i'm sure some of you also have that advantage number one is i'm not afraid to make mistake i have heard from some so many people trying to learn new languages that they are so scared and so shy to make mistakes. The thing is, I don't have that thing. If anything, I try to make as much mistake as possible so that I can be corrected by the people listening to me. I honestly think that's an advantage that I have. Maybe it comes out to my personality. I'm just not afraid to say whatever rubbish comes out from my mouth. <laughs> the other advantage that I have, and I'm sure many of you have the same, is that I can practice Japanese at work. I have the opportunity to be surrounded by a team that entirely speak Japanese and they use only Japanese during meeting when they shift to english it's usually to try to talk to me you feel me so like 99 percent of the time we're speaking japanese inside the meeting not outside outside is something else so that exposes me a lot into a baby learning method remember how did we learn a language when we were a kid we just kept listening to people and then we started saying rubbish and became eventually fluent the last advantage that i have is that i love books that are related to self-improvement and i used to think these kind of things are rubbish and that's until you find the book that actually speaks to you all right yakuza so this is pretty much it for the video it's been a long time since we've had a one-on-one -on -one chat like this and i'm so happy we've had one around learning japanese so if you did like this video you did like the vibes around here don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on my social media don't hesitate to say hi by the way and please 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 guys i need you to do the youtube things because it helps me a lot to be recommended to some other people that would be happy to see some things on this channel and actually use some advice and i don't know any other thing that would be helpful for them in their journey in their life so please like comment subscribe share it with your network and i would say mite kurete arigatou gozaimashita